Hello YouTube, it's Stuart and I'm back to make a quick video about um yeah something that happened to me last week again involving the police. Um well I was coming back from a friend's house and it was late. Uh it was I suppose it would have been maybe it was two o'clock in the morning or thereabouts. Been over to see a friend and uh now the area of that we live in is um it's quite it's quite a, a built up area, it's it's close to Dublin City. And the crime levels will be quite high compared to other parts of Dul Dublin or maybe even outside of Dublin. Because it's in the city, you know. Uh, like for example, you know where I live, just at the at the top of the road there. A couple of weeks ago, and um, there was a girl found in a suitcase. A girl found dead in a suitcase. A, a foreign girl, um, and you know, this is like this is the kind of thing that happens in Dublin, where we live. Um, uh, you know, on a fairly regular basis, like these kind of killings and, and deaths, and this kind of violence, it's, it's become like so common that. You know, okay, you hear about it and you're like, Jesus, that's terrible. But then you, you hear about these kind of things so often now that the shock doesn't 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 stay with you for long, you know. Um, and you know, as well as that, as well, you know, it's that's this is this is one of the reasons why I, I don't read the newspapers because I don't want to be reading about stuff like that to be perfectly honest with you um a woman having you know something like that happened to a woman or ha happened to anybody Jesus like I mean and you know unfortunately you know the newspapers um they want or they want they they pre predominantly the, the news that you see in the newspapers is negative there's very very little positive news in the in the newspapers because it seems that the more gory the, the story uh, the more newspapers are sold but I just cannot read it or stuff like that you know it's bad enough that we're in um, the current the, the current economic climate people are struggling in many ways and you want some positivity and you open the paper the, well, even just the front page of the paper and you, you, you read a story like that you know, like, I just don't want to read it, to be perfectly honest with you. But, and then you have on top of that, you have the crime. You have the gangs in Dublin who are basically running amok, um, taking each other out. A couple of years back, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, the uh, the two major gangs um, basically turned on each other, who were controlling the, the, the drug trade, and there was all sorts of carry on backstabbing going on and basically they started taking each other out because you know they want the control of, of the whole scene themselves and it's every couple of weeks you, you basically hear about people being shot dead oftentimes not too far from where I live you know so it's, it's absolutely mental like, what's going on and on top of that the police which I'm going to talk about now the uh the police numbers are being cut back at the moment as part of the austerity measures and if there's one area you don't cut back during the recession is policing because it's a well known it's well known that when you're in a recession crime goes up even people who wouldn't ordinarily steal or commit crimes you know things are so bad uh, that they, they will go out and, and commit crimes and this is the time when we need the streets we need um, an obvious amount of police. You know, that, that, that there needs to be an obvious police presence on the streets. Police need to be seen. But they're cutting back, or they're cutting back on, the, on the closing police stations. Like for example, the police station that I got brought to a couple of months ago when it was pulled up by the police, that's being closed down. And yet that's in a fairly built up area um, close to Dublin City. Um, I just don't I just don't understand where they can find all the money 
to pay the bondholders, to bail out the banks, and yet they cut back on policing. You know, where are the government's priorities? I know that in, the, in this particular country, I understand that um, the deficit has to be cleared uh, over time because the outgoings are far higher down than what's uh, coming in on tax. And everybody with half a brain understands that that has to be um, uh, sorted out. So the, uh, the country can can, be, can begin to grow again and you know the economy can, can stabilize and jobs can be created but you know essential services like you know uh, hospital care and policing is the last things that, that should be touched but that's what they go for they, 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 they you know and you have all these staff working in the public se sector who have got pay, pay rises already is massive pay rises unjustified pay rises and to be perfectly honest a lot of these should be getting laid off because they've had cushy jobs for years but no they get kept on they still get their their most well pay back at the end of the week but hospital care suffers education suffers and policing suffers but in saying that um well, i was coming home last week and you know, I had this hoodie on last week. It's obviously cold out, and I like to keep myself wrapped up in the cold weather, obviously, you know. So I'm walking home. I'm not too far from where I, I live, and I'm walking along a main road. And the, the, the police will be up and down that road after a certain hour at night to keep them on things. Because that there would be a fair amount of criminal activity in and around this particular area. So I'm walking along with the hood up minding my own business and the next thing a car a police car pulls up slowly beside me. Um now I was in a bit of a giddy mood to begin with so I was like, oh here we go, here's the police. But it was a, it was a different situation because they weren't being aggressive. They were just it was late at night, they're patrolling the area. It is a hotspot for crime uh, in comparison to other parts of the city and you know the greater area of Dublin. So you don't mind the police going up and down and checking these out. But I was I wanted to have a bit of banter with them anyway because I was in that kind of mills. So you know uh, the, the policeman, the guard, he rolls down his window and he says to me, "Yeah, uh, how hurricanes? This is grand, not a bother." I says, where are you coming from? I says, I want to be down at a friend's house. I went down to see a friend. Um, he said, where do you where, where do you live? And I said, uh, I live in a flat. He said to him, and uh, well, well, he said, uh, what type of accommodation do you live in? And he said, I live in a house. And I says, really? Very nice. He says, how very middle to upper class. You live in a house? I said it must be great and get downstairs <clears throat> to just say I'm going upstairs I'm going to go for a walk around the house sure why not I've got any amount of rooms to go into I'm just going to go and stroll around the house and enjoy myself and I was just messing with him you know and he looked at me and he's like and then he just started laughing you know and uh, no we were just having a bit of banter because at the end of the day he wasn't being he, you know he wasn't being a prick, he, just because he had, he, he had his uniform on, he, he wasn't behaving like an asshole. And, well, the way I look at it is, if they treat me with courtesy, I'll treat them with the same respect. And that goes for anybody. I like that with everybody, it doesn't matter whether the police or not. Um, treat people the way you want to be treated, is my motto, you know. So I just said to the police, yeah, I, I, just, I just lived down the road um, on the way home. And that was the end of that. I just switched them well. It says, look lads, be careful. Uh, we're just walking tonight and look at yourselves. And, uh, and that was it. And they were going off the own, the own doing the thing. And I, I, was, I was on my way home. But, um, obviously, you know, in this particular <clears throat> economic climate, I, you know, it's nice to see a police presence that late at night. Um, but over time, that's going to that's going to get less and less because every 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 single time there's a budget, the government seems to hit the police, you know. 
and I just think it's an awful shame that the government are being dictated so much by it's basically the Germans, the Germans, the, the German um, Chancellor Angela Merkel, who's was, who's was pulling the strings here and telling Ireland basically what they can and can't do, how they can and can't spend their money. Ireland has become Germany's bitch in effect. Um, and we're seen as the country to um, 